Next year in May, the new European MDR will take effect. And a lot of companies that currently have CE marketing are struggling to try to update all their documentation to the new MDR requirements. Not only do they have to update all their procedures to comply with the new MDR requirements, but they also have to update their technical file documentation. And one of the tasks that we're going to expect auditors to be looking for when they come to do a CE marketing audit is to see if the company's actually conducted an internal audit of the technical files after they were updated. Um, it's, it's not enough just to update them, but you also have to show that you're auditing your systems as well. So I have a lot of companies coming to me now and asking if I can do a technical file gap analysis and a quality system gap analysis. And I've come up with this fairly um, straightforward system for performing the gap analysis of the technical files. And I thought I'd share that with companies. And I thought it might be helpful to others that are trying to go through the same task. First of all, I created a technical file audit report. I wanted a template that I could use for all the technical file audits that I do. So I took my standard internal audit template and I modified that for technical files. And so it indicates the, the date and the client and the lead auditor, all the normal information that we can have. But then down in the purpose in the audit criteria, we have the purposes to audit the technical file for compliance to the new regulation. And number two, the audit criteria is annexes one, two, three, and four of the new MDR. And of course, there's going to be no previous technical file findings to address uh, because most companies are doing this for the first time. And then you fill in the audit report. So with most audit reports, I have strengths and weaknesses of their technical files. Nobody's perfect, but we try to point out the strengths and weaknesses. Otherwise, we aren't showing a balanced audit. And then we have the details of the audit. And most auditors prefer to use checklists. And I prefer to use the the process approach to auditing, which is a little different. But in this particular case where you're looking for technical file compliance, I think using an, uh, a checklist approach and, or the element approach is a much better approach to making sure you have compliance of the technical file. So the first thing we start out with is Annex 1. So we have Annex 1, Essential Safety and Performance Requirements. Or, um, and this would be Sections 1 through 23.4. And I just have a box here that says compliant. So if you're doing, if you're doing an audit of a company, you have to decide how deep you're gonna go into this area. Do they have a template that's been updated? So I'll give you an example. Um, I actually have one here. So when you look at the essential requirements checklist, this is one that's been updated to the new regulations. And it go, that first section of general requirements stops at number nine. And then we go into requirements regarding design and construction. So at the top here, you'll see it's a general requirements. And that's an item, items one through nine. And then item 10 gets into the specifics of design and construction. And it goes all the way down to 23.4. And you can see it's pretty long. It's a 22 page template. And it's the same format that we used to use for the MDR, I'm sorry, the MDD. But the big difference here is the sections are different. Now, instead of sections one through 6A, we have sections one through nine. Instead of sections um, 10 through, I'm sorry, it would be seven through 13.3. Now we have 10 through 23.4. So it is different. So when you're conducting the audit, you get to decide, am I just gonna put in here, no, they haven't updated to the new template and leave it at that. Or maybe they have updated it to the new template and I need to go more in depth. It depends on how deep you want to go into it. So one of the tools that I found out there, BSI has actually done a cross-reference map. And so when I go through this training on the webinar, I'm going to actually point out what you want to look for in the different places where they're different. So you have, they've indicated here is what the, is in the new MDR, here's what's in the MDD, here's what the AIMD, here's other guidance to look at. And then they indicate where there's gaps. So this is what the new MDR has, but this is where there was a gap in the MDD that now has to be filled. So you might look at what did they put in for section number three? What did they put in for section number nine? What did they put in down here for section 10.6 and 11.2 and 11.3? And the list goes on for several pages. So that's one of the things that you might want to look for when you're doing an in-depth uh, technical file. 
But if you're just doing a, a, um, a desktop audit and the company hasn't updated it yet, this becomes very simple. No, they haven't. And if you happen to have a template that you've already created, you can share that. The next section that we look at is Annex 2, and this is the technical documentation. And most of this should be very similar to what they have had before. So we always had to have a device description. We always had to talk about previous and similar generations of the device. We always had to provide information provided by the fact manufacturer, which is the labeling section and instruction for use, brochures, things like that. The design and manufacturing information, this is where we would provide drawing specifications, flow charts, uh, the manufacturing process flow, manufacturing procedures. This is a cross-reference to um, the Annex 1 essential performance requirements that are up here. So you should be just saying C above. Um, benefit risk analysis. They should still be doing a benefit at risk analysis, but one of the things you want to keep in mind here is that the risk analysis requirements are now Annex 1, sections 1 through 9, which is different from what was in the MDD in sections uh, one through six. And then in addition, you have the ISO 14971 standard is gonna be updated later this year. So in fall of uh, 2019, we're gonna have a new risk management standard that we need to address as well. And if you've had a chance to look at my blog on that, there, there are some definitely some subtle changes that are gonna make a difference. Um, so companies are going to have to look at the risk management file and their benefit risk analysis and update those as well. The next item is the product verification validation. So you're going to be doing this, but if you've got clinical data or preclinical data or clinical evaluation reports, those need to be updated to the latest uh, requirements. And then we have verification validation, additional information that might be specific to that product if there's a common specification. So keep in mind in the past, we, everything was based on harmonized standards. Now we also have to worry about common specifications as those arise. So you're gonna have common specifications and harmonized standards. Then we get into Annex 3. This is where we see the biggest change of all in the MDD, I'm sorry, from the MDD. You were always required to provide a post-market surveillance plan, but a lot of companies didn't understand what that was and they clarified that in the MDR. It's not just your procedure. What they're looking for is a plan that's specific to each product um, or product family. So you need to have a plan as well as your procedure. You also need a post-market uh, or a periodic safety update report or PSUR. And this is going to have a summary of some of the clinical data uh, based on your post-market surveillance that you've done. And then you have a post-market surveillance report that has to be included. And a lot of companies aren't doing these on a regular basis. Now there are some minimum requirements for, uh, particularly for implants and class three devices to do this annually. So the PSUR and post-market surveillance reports need to be updated more frequently. The clinical evaluation report needs to be updated more frequently. So we expect this section to be very different and require a lot of updates for companies that have not been keeping up to date, particularly those companies that are not in the implant market. And then we have the last section, the declaration of conformity. Now, every company out there should have a declaration of conformity, but they're going to need to revise it. And the most significant changes are going to be, um, you're going to have to include your UDI, uh, UDI references for each of the DIs for the product. This part shouldn't be to change the product names and catalog numbers, but the risk classification should be different. So if you see something that says Annex uh, 9, that means they haven't updated it from the MDD. It should say Annex 8, and it should have different numbers because the classification rules have changed as well. Um, they might, they haven't all changed, so it's possible that they aren't updated, but at least it should not say Annex 9, it should say Annex 8. There should be a statement of conformity with the MDR instead of the MDD. They may reference common specifications, so that's one of the things you might wanna look at first to see have they identified any common specifications in their declaration of conformity before you go in to the rest of the technical file. Um, if, if, you, um, if you don't see a notified body name and number, that's a, a gap. You also wanna have the conformity assessment process, so it shouldn't be showing Annex 2, because Annex 2 is no longer a conformity assessment process in the MDR. It's now Annex um, 9, 10, uh, I think 11 and 12 are the annexes where we have conformity assessment. 
And those are different from what we had in the MDD, which was, I think, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then last but not least, any additional information that's required for that product or by the notified body. Um, oh, and your signature at the bottom. So then I have a place for your nonconformity. So you would indicate, you'd put a copy in of what the requirement is, briefly summarize what's missing, and then provide detailed objective evidence of what's missing. And then at the bottom here, I have some standard boilerplate recommendations. So whoever's doing the audit, you might want to include, remember to include their resume and training records as part of your approved supplier list and the uh, documentation or objective evidence of how you selected them and approved them as a supplier. These are required to have records of supplier approval even for consultants. Number two, you want to update your training requirements for all your internal auditors to make sure they've been trained to regulation EU 2017-745. You want to make sure all your procedures are updated to include the technical documentation requirements. And then last but not least, you want to make controlled, brand new controlled templates for the essential uh, safety and performance requirements, the technical file index, you use an index, and the declaration of conformity. So those are the key things that I'm recommending is sort of boilerplate requirements. And if um, you're missing any of these uh, items, so one of the places you can look, I should have probably pulled up this page ahead of time. So here's our Medical Device Academy website. And if we go to our webinars page, we have an eight part EU regulation training. So we've actually recorded all these. I didn't put in hyperlinks for all of these as I should have, but you can purchase this eight part series by clicking here. And all of these have been recorded now. Uh, they were recorded earlier this year. And um, this is where um, we're going to be drawing some of the material for this webinar. But we're going to get much more in depth into what to look at and what to look for when you're conducting a technical file audit. So if you're interested in um, getting some training on how to do a technical file audit in general, or specifically what to look for in the new MDR, uh, particularly if you're a consultant that's doing this or you're an internal auditor that needs to keep up to date, uh, this is the webinar for you. Um, it'll be on August 8th, it's a Thursday at noon Eastern time, and uh, it's $129 for the webinar. You will also get a training, um, so I, I think I say this on our webinars page here. Yes, so this webinar also includes an audit report template, so you actually get that template that I was showing, um, this one here. So template 28, you'll get this whole entire template. And then um, in addition to that, you will get um, the training exam with a certificate. So you'll get the exam, you fill, complete the exam, you send that back to us, we'll grade it for you and give you a training certificate. And on the page for this, a little bit lower down, you can see a copy of what that template or the training certificate will look like. So anybody that's interested, you can click on this hyperlink here and it'll take you to the page and you can purchase that. And if you aren't available for that particular day and time, don't worry, it's also offered as a recording. And I provide a hyperlink in the email where we give you the login information and in our slide decks for our Calendly app. But if, if you wanna to go to our uh, Contact Us page, we actually have Calendly apps here. So if you wanna schedule a 15 minute, 30 minute or 60 minute meeting, this 30 minute meeting is what I give the link for, so you can get a free 30 minute meeting where we can do Q&A and answer any of your questions about how to do a technical file audit to the new MDR. Um, and if you wanna ask specific questions about your company and keep it proprietary, um, I'm more than happy to sign an NDA and you can um, click on this link and schedule a meeting or click on the link in the email that comes to you when you purchase the webinar. Uh, so hopefully I'll see a lot of people uh, join this webinar and if you, uh, catch this late, don't worry, it was recorded and you will receive the recording. Uh, but you'll still be able to schedule the 30 minute meeting with me anytime you want to answer questions. If your company uh, doesn't have the bandwidth or doesn't have anybody that's qualified that would be independent because you can't audit your own work, uh, we also are more than happy to do uh, desktop audits of your technical file for you or come on site if you need uh, a lot of technical files reviewed because I know some companies have over 20 technical files to review. So in those cases, we can provide a quote. Um, but typically, if you just have one technical file and you want to do a desktop review, I would 
typically budget about four hours of time. And typically our hourly rate is $300. So that'd be a $1,200 audit and you get the report um, and um, some advice on how to modify your technical file. And I usually am willing to share my, my templates for you so you can update some of those documentation for you as well. Um, we also have procedures for technical files. Uh, let me see if I can find an example for that. That might be one other thing that would be of interest to people out there. So if you click, this is our, our procedures page and we list all the procedures down below. But if you, if you click on number 25, our technical documentation procedure, um, the C marking procedure is currently compliant with the MDD. However, we're in the process of updating everything to the MDR. So we already have the essential requirements checklist updated. We already have the declaration of conformity template updated. I'm gonna have the technical file uh, index probably updated very shortly here this, and this overall procedure by the end of August. So you can purchase that procedure here if you wish. Um, and then if you're interested, we have other things here. We have some links for a quality plan on the MDR, uh, technical file, uh, C marking and 510K submission, comparing those two, what are the differences between the technical file and a 510K, the eight webinar based course, and then there will be a hyperlink here to the new uh, webinar very shortly. So uh, that's what we have for resource for those of you that are switching over to the new MDR. And I hope we can help you. Thank you very much for your time and have a nice day. Bye-bye.